Moderna has announced it's ready to start vaccine clinical trials on kids. We'll explain how Arizona is leading the charge. Plus, a look at the decline of monarch butterflies and why they won't be getting endangered species protection anytime soon. And in the next half hour on Break It Down, the factors contributing to a disproportionate amount of women leaving the workforce. Cronkite News starts now. Good evening and welcome to Cronkite News on Arizona PBS. I'm Sedona Meadows. And I'm Ivory Ward. Thank you for joining us. COVID-19 cases are on the decline in Arizona. This morning, Dr. Joshua LaBear of the ASU Biodesign Institute confirmed there are now less than 1,000 cases being reported per day. And although cases of the UK variant are on the rise in our state, LaBear says he's hopeful the vaccine will work well against it. The key is getting everyone inoculated. So we have to be, you know, continued measures for precaution, I continue wearing masks in public, still recommending all of those things, uh, at least until we get to this herd immunity point, uh, which looks like it's on track for sometime in July. Last week, President Biden addressed the nation, promising the country will be able to return to normal by July 4th. LaBear says that is possible, especially since a couple million people are being vaccinated daily. Drug, drug maker Moderna announced this week that Phoenix will be one of the cities where it will begin clinical trials of its COVID-19 vaccine on children, with subjects ranging in age from six months up to 12 years old. Cronkite News reporter Jake Holter explains how that works from our Washington bureau. Moderna got approval to use its two-dose COVID vaccine on adults in December, and it has already started tests of the drug on teens. These latest trials will test different vaccine doses to see what works on the youngest of children. So the adult dose for the Moderna is 100 micrograms, but they are starting with 25 micrograms uh, and then basically watching kids to see how they react. Dr. Shad Marvasti, Director of Public Health and Prevention at the University of Arizona College of Medicine, says doses will likely be adjusted from there to find the most effective levels. If that looks good and there's no major issues, then they will have a group of the kids in the study have 50 micrograms. And then if that looks okay, they'll have another group that has 100 micrograms. Marvasi, who is not working on the Moderna trial, said it will likely take several weeks for all the pieces to fall into place. But organizers of the Phoenix trial say that hasn't kept parents from flooding them with hundreds of calls asking if their kids might be eligible. Even though kids are at a much lower risk from COVID-19, the director of the American Public Health Association says there are several good reasons to get them vaccinated. The reason we want to make sure that all of these uh, kids get uh, vaccinated is so that we can truly achieve herd immunity. We don't want to have little pockets of people who might be infectious and not be protected. The first phase of this trial will include 750 children in later trials with adjusted doses of the vaccine will include some kids getting a placebo. Ultimately, this trial will include 6,750 children in 75 cities. Moderna, along with Marvasi and Benjamin, say the trials are safe for kids. Marvasi says Moderna's trust that the vaccine is safe enough to begin trials on kids could have an added benefit, helping to quell vaccine hesitancy among other groups. Hopefully, depending on the results, it will help give uh, people more confidence to get the vaccine, especially if it proves to be as safe, safe and effective in children as it has been in adults. And Benjamin says that if these trials lead to the right vaccine protocols for children, they will not only protect everyone from transmission, but will help kids return to normal. Getting kids vaccinated, I think, will certainly improve their quality of life and their ability to, to really interact effectively with their friends. In Washington, Jay Coulter, Cronkite News. Moderna's announcement comes as Arizona passes an important COVID vaccination milestone. The state health department said this week that more than 1.6 million people have received at least one dose of the vaccine, and just over 1 million of those people are fully vaccinated against the coronavirus. The Phoenix City Council voted to reopen outdoor parks amenities yesterday. These areas have been closed since early December. Athletic fields reservations will be available Monday. Local tournaments can resume starting March 22nd. Groups larger than 50 people are still required to submit COVID safety plans. And spectators and coaches are required to wear masks and maintain social distancing protocols. As for parks, people will be able to reserve ramps ramadas and picnic tables, basketball and volleyball courts, and fitness equipments. Pools and splash pads in the city are scheduled to reopen May 29th. 
Speaking of openings, President Joe Biden reopened the Affordable Care Act to help Americans who lost their health insurance during the pandemic. Nicole Long explains how that's impacted underserved communities in Arizona. Millions of Americans have more time to buy health insurance through the Affordable Care Act, popularly known as Obamacare. Cynthia Aragon of Helping Families in Need says that the Affordable Care Act will help many people. People will see that it's accessible and that it's still there. The original enrollment period began last November and ended on December 15th, but President Joe Biden reopened the enrollment window to sign up for coverage until May 15th. President Biden says this action is intended to address rising numbers of people who have lost their health insurance due to COVID-19. This gives them another opportunity to do so, view their options, and get enrolled and get the um, health care that they need. The census data showed that nationally, Hispanics had the lowest rate of health insurance coverage. Nearly 18 percent did not have insurance in 2018. The rate of Hispanics with health insurance dropped by 1.6 percent from 2017. They already were facing a lot of barriers, addressing even more barriers. And how can we help um, change those barriers or move them or, you know, be be there for the community. The Georgetown Center for Children and Families indicates that 1.6 million Latino children in the United States were uninsured in 2018. 65% of uninsured Latino children reside in five states, Arizona, California, Florida, Texas, and Georgia. Overall average rate changes for 2021 range from a 7% decrease to a 9% increase. COVID-related enrollment window runs through May 15, 2021, according to healthinsurance.org. After May 15th, enrollment for Arizona health insurance will open again in November 2021 for 2022 coverage. Taking a look outside now from our downtown studios, enjoy those beautiful 70 degree temperatures while you can because we'll be warming up in the next few days. Faith Ambercrombie is joining us with what we can expect for the rest of the week. Faith? Hello and happy St. Patrick's Day. As you can see, I'm not participating in wearing green today because, well, I would be invisible. But let's get started with these high temperatures for today. It's about 72 degrees over in Lake Havasu, 72 down here in Tucson, and 72 here in Phoenix. Now looking at our valley highs for tomorrow, all across, it's going to be about 80 degrees, 82 in here in Phoenix tomorrow. Now, looking ahead at our St. Patrick's Day evening tonight, the closest thing we're going to get to a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow is, well, golden hour at 630. Around 6 p.m., it's going to be 71 degrees, a little bit of a breeze, but nothing too windy. And as we dip off later into the night, it'll be about 63 at 10 p.m. Now jumping into our weather tomorrow, it will be 82 and sunny, 86 and sunny on Friday and 85 and sunny on Saturday. We're going to end the weekend with some clouds and some clouds as well on Tuesday and Wednesday of next week, maybe a little bit of rain. Well, that is your forecast from the Weather Center. I'm Faith Abercrombie. Monarch butterflies migrate to California and Mexico to winter every year, but over the past decade, their numbers have dwindled. Now there's a push to get them listed as an endangered species, but as Cronkite News reporter Riley Walter said, reports, there won't happen anytime soon. It's easy to recognize a monarch butterfly with its orange and black wings. But finding monarchs these days isn't as easy as it once was. That's because monarch butterfly numbers continue to decline. That kind of spectacular experience of being surrounded by thousands or tens of thousands or even hundreds of thousands of butterflies, people used to be able to experience that in California. And as of this year, we don't have that anymore. Conservation groups petitioned to have the monarch listed as endangered in 2014. In December, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service announced that listing the monarch butterfly is, quote, warranted but precluded. So it is now a candidate species and that means we have to review its status every year to make sure nothing has changed either for the better or for worse. That's uh, something that we will do and then within the uh, list of species that we have to determine whether or not they're going to be listed. Western monarchs travel for months to spend the winters in California. The Xerces Society has tracked the monarchs for decades, and there used to be millions of butterflies that would winter in California. But for several years, those numbers have only been a few hundred thousand. Monarchs at overwintering sites. And then three years ago in the fall, we counted less than 30,000. And so it was like a tenfold drop. It shocked us. Habitat loss, especially milkweed, is a major reason why the monarch population continues to decline. 
A female monarch butterfly lays her eggs on the leaf of a milkweed plant. Over a two to five week period, a female can lay between 300 and 500 eggs. The Desert Botanical Garden here in Phoenix is trying to increase awareness about monarchs and the importance of milkweed. In the past, they challenged the public to find milkweed and monarchs in their everyday lives. They also encouraged the public to plant milkweed, which the garden grows multiple species of. I think monarch conservation is such an important gateway to other types of conservation. So people love monarch butterflies. They have stories about monarch butterflies. It's a very recognizable and charismatic um, creature. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service plans to propose to list the monarch butterfly as endangered in 2024. Riley Walter, Cronkite News. To help preserve western monarchs, the Xerces Society also recommends avoiding pesticides, planting native milkweed and wildflowers, and engaging community science projects. A team of engineers at the University of Arizona want to build a sort of a doomsday vault filled with seeds and other genetic material required to repopulate the species of plants and animals that live on Earth. And they're so worried about a global cataclysm that they want to bury it on the moon. Not only would it take 250 rocket launches to get samples from 6.7 million species to the lunar surface, the technology to keep it cold enough for long-term storage doesn't exist yet. Smaller versions of what they're talking about to do already exist on Earth. You're looking at the Global Seed Vault, which keeps about a million seed samples preserved on a remote island between Norway and the North Pole. Hi, I'm Gareth Kwok. After the break, I'll have your Cronkite Sports Report. The rodeo returns, and we'll take you to a professional bull riding event that took place in the Valley this weekend, so don't go away. Ready to watch the best of PBS anytime, anywhere, on nearly any device? It's easy with the free PBS Video app. Simply download the PBS Video app on your mobile or streaming device. Now you can watch the latest PBS episodes or catch up on the shows you missed. And when you support your local station, you can get PBS Passport, giving you access to more episodes, more specials, more of what you love. thought is how can I serve this community? The biggest hurdle was not taking PTSD personally. So would you welcome please the amazing everybody that watches that they say that I'm the greatest that they've ever seen. Take a journey with Arizona PBS. Join us every Sunday afternoon for Destination Drama. Watch all your favorite PBS dramas like Grand Chester. I'm William Davenport, new vicar of Grand Chester. Paul Dark. Nothing in my life has meaning without you. And Victoria. I know that I'm young, but I know my duty. And if you missed a recent primetime drama, we'll help you catch up on those too. Destination Drama, every Sunday afternoon at one. Only on Arizona PBS. The great thing is to last and get your work done. And see and hear and learn and understand. And write when there is something that you know and not before and not too damned much after. Coming in April to Arizona PBS. Welcome back. I'm Gareth Kwok, and this is your Cronkite Sports Report. Two big names from ASU basketball announced they'll enter the transfer portal. Junior forward Tayshawn Cherry as well, who stepped away from the team due to personal reasons. But more surprising, however, was Jalen House, the sophomore who is transferring away from the program. Jalen is the son of Sun Devil legend Eddie House, and his improvement this season was one of the few bright spots for Bobby Hurley's squad. House averaged only 5.3 points per game, but was in line for a potential starting opportunity next season. And there's never a shortage of sports to watch in the Valley. Professional bull riding held an event at Gila River Arena over the weekend. Cronkite News reporter Jordan Spurgeon was there to bring us 
the sights and sounds of the event and explain a little bit more about the growth of the sport. Professional bull riding comes to the valley once a year with riders showcasing a growth in skill level that is decades in the making. These guys are, you know, they're getting serious about their training and stuff like that. So it's more than just a bunch of yahoos out there playing around. It's a bunch of guys who are really serious about what they're doing and they're athletes. So. One of those athletes is 21-year-old Colton Fritzland. He grew up around rodeos and is now a three-time event winner and the number eight ranked rider in the world. Growing up, I was around rodeo, that was it, you know, and it wasn't gonna be a, you know, it was a given that I was gonna rodeo my whole life. You know, so getting here, it's just a huge blessing and looking forward to it. Cody Custer was a bull rider for the Professional Rodeo Cowboys Association in the 80s prior to co-founding PBR in 1992. An exclusive network deal with CBS Sports has brought in the cash as the winning rider and bull each season rake in $1 million. You know, it's great to see what's going on with these guys being able to walk away from the sport with quite a bit and have, have something to show for it because there was a lot of guys back in back in my day and before that gave their life to it and they left uh, with nothing. The Bulls are also popular among the fan base. Some of the best belong to Jeremy Walker, who says it takes a while for Bulls to be certified for PBR competition. It's hard to get a bull that buck's really hard ridden, but if you want to get one that, that's that good ridden, you got to bring them here. So once you, once you know they can ride them and, they're and then you see them buck again and they're still good, that's kind of when you can learn to trust them. Don't be bullish. This sport is brutal, and the athletes train intensely for it. For Cronkite Sports, I'm Jordan Spurgeon. The Cardinals have been a hot topic in NFL circles after the signing of J.J. Watt. Now they've signed A.J. Green as well. The veteran receiver joins DeAndre Hopkins alongside quarterback Kyler Murray and newly acquired center Rodney Hudson. Linebacker Marcus Golden commented on the recent hype. With all those pieces we got, of course, I expect big things. And, and I know everybody else that's, that's a part of it expect big things. So we're going to get together, make sure we work and, and get it going, do whatever we got to do to win. That's all for today's Cronkite Sports Report. Back to you, Sedona and Ivory. That's it for News tonight. Thanks for joining us. For top Arizona stories anytime, go to cronkitenews.azpbs.org.